Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the weekend. Finally made it to another weekend. Thought I'd uh, try and keep it going once a week. Have a little, uh, little dram share session. A couple of whiskies tonight. So last week we did, oh, what was it we did? I think it was, hmm, space side sort of whiskies. Two McAllens and the Crag and Moor Distillers Edition, uh, which was really good, enjoyed it. Um, this week I thought I'd just swing right to the opposite end of the pendulum and go for island whiskies. Island whiskies, and uh, one is from the island of Sky, and the other is from Isla, the island of Isla, um, which are well known for their peaty whiskies. But this one is that I've got planned is not awfully peaty, but is a cask strength whiskey, so I'm leaving that to last. Normally, I would leave Talisker Storm to last because it's quite peaty, um, but because my second whiskey is a cask strength whiskey. I thought I would go for that one last because it's going to be stronger than this one. Um, not as peaty, but stronger. So that's the order I'm going to do them in this time round. And I've done both of these whiskies before. Like I said um, in the last stream, sort of run out of whiskies to do now. And I haven't really got an excuse to buy any new whiskies. So I thought I would just run through them again. See, uh, see what you guys think. So yeah, hope you're all well and had a good week. Um, I've had a decent week myself, pretty busy at work, so it's all good. It's all good. So, um, first whiskey we've got here is Talisker Storm. Um, a Talisker do a, I think it's a 12 year old Talisker do. Um, that's their standard whiskey um, that you can buy in your supermarkets and stuff. Talisker Storm, you can buy that in the supermarkets at times. Um, it's basically like the 12 year old, but it's a lot peatier um, and sort of ta is tailored towards the taste of people that have you know, got a bit of a, a need for a bit of peat in their whiskey and a bit of uh, extra smokiness, um, hence the, the name. Talisker Storm. Um, it was released in early 2013. Um, it's got it's it's a non-age statement whiskey, so there's no age on this whiskey. Um, as you can see on the bottle, no age. Um, but it's most likely going to be similar to the 12 year old in age, maybe a little bit younger. Um, you know, so. Yeah, uh, and it's matured in toasted American oak casks. Um, so it's um, toasted just basically means it's, it's it burnt the inside of the casks, maybe a little bit more than usual, get a little bit more smokiness into the whiskey, a bit more colour as well, quite a little bit more, a uh, bit more colour than the usual twelve-year-old um, whiskey. Um, yeah, currently. Currently, the only single malt whiskey produced on Sky. But there are other distilleries that are currently producing uh, but haven't been released yet. So um, it'll say that on the bottle. Um, distilled at Talisker, the only distillery on the Isle of Sky, Scotland. But that is going to change soon. They're, that They're going to have to remove that from their labels. If not, they might already have because... I've had this bottle for six years, <laughs> so it's it's um they maybe already changed the labeling. I'm not too sure. So yeah, it was uh, established in 1830, um so quite a well established distillery. Been there a long time. Part of the Diageo Group. Mentioned Diageo last week. Um, Crag and Moore is a is a part of the Diageo Group. Um, British drinks firm who own a lot of distilleries in Scotland and 
uh, I think they own breweries and um, distilleries all around the world. Um, big drink um, producer, and they own um, the classic malts. So Talisker, twelve year old, I think I'm sure it is a twelve year old. Talisker twelve is a part of the classic malts as well as Crag and Moor, twelve year old, uh, Lagavulin in sixteen, Cardew, um, and a handful of others. Uh, Dalwini, Blair Athol, uh, there's lots, there's lots. So, yeah, and oh, yeah, can't forget Oban and uh, Glen Kinchy. So, they, they own whiskies like right the way across the board. So, from their Lowland distillery, which would be sort of Glen Kinchy, to their Isla distillery, which would be Lagavulin, a um, couple of Speyside distilleries, a couple of Highland distilleries. Um, an island distillery um so yeah they i think what they try to do is just make sure they had a good mix of of, of uh, whiskies and distilleries in their portfolio um so they they captured i suppose the highest you know the the biggest amount of 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 market share which is a very clever business move um so the strength this whiskey is a little bit stronger than normal obviously a uh, usual bog standard uh, single malt is going to be about 40%. This is 45.8%. So it's quite a bit stronger than normal. Um, it's quite common to see whiskies at a thir- uh, 42 to 44%, but not much higher than that, really. If it's you know a lot higher than that, like our second whiskey is going to be, um, it's basically a cask strength. Uh, if it's come straight out of the cask, for example, this one we've got coming up, I'm not going to tell you what it is just yet, is 60.4 percent um but it is cask strength that is the strength it was when it came out the cask so this is a a little bit stronger than normal so um yeah interesting i think they did that intentionally just to try and make it a bit of a punchier uh whiskey that would um you would know you were drinking a decent dram um so yeah um price wise on this now it's ranges between sort of 37 38 pounds to about 41 42 pounds a bottle you can sometimes get it on offer in the supermarkets um and it's well worth snatching up if you see it on offer i would i would buy a bottle because um it's it's a really good quality whiskey it's talisker it's going to be good quality um but it's something a little bit different um that yeah you know you can tailor it to somebody who comes around that's wanting a whiskey that's a little bit more peaty a little bit more smoky but let's say you don't particularly like peaty or smoky whiskies this is one that you can both enjoy Uh, and i think that was the main reason they developed it really um because it's not too peaty it's not too smoky but at the same time it's not too light so it's a good sort of gateway whiskey into uh peaty and smoky whiskies i would say um and I'm not a big fan of peaty and smoky whiskies. I can drink them, but I wouldn't go out and buy myself, you know, something like a Lafroy or a a Coolila or something like that. Just wouldn't, because it's it's just a bit too much for me. But someday I'm gonna get there. I will teach my t- taste buds to enjoy it, um, and uh, we will get there someday. So yeah, um, so that's about it, really. Colour-wise on this whiskey, I've not actually got a note of what the official colour is. So what I can do is um, go onto the Dramshare Facebook page. If you've not checked it out yet, um, go and have a look. Just type in Dramshare uh, on um, on Facebook and you will come across um, my page. And um, yeah, have a look at it. See, see what you think. Um... It's got all the various pictures of the different whiskies I've tasted on the streams and stuff. A couple of interesting bits about the the sort of flavour chart, um, where it shows you a handful of whiskies, and you know, it's got this sort of rich on one side, light on the other, smoky at the top, delicate at the bottom. So if you think you know, ah, oh, well, I like my whiskey to be rich, but I don't like it to be too smoky, you can sort of try and zone in on, on what you might like. So there as well, I've got this color chart, um, which I find quite interesting. Um, it's on, uh, it's come off of 
whiskies.co.uk um, and it's quite interesting it's a bit like a color chart of uh, painting your walls or something so it goes right away from the dark end sorry the dark end to the light end um, and it just helps you try and sort of see what what official title or what official colour does your whiskey fall into? So, you know, I'm going to say about there somewhere. So the middle of the bottle would be about, what are we going to say? Look at it myself. I sort of, it's got a couple of unusual ones. Russet Macat or Chestnut Plorso Sherry, potentially. Uh, burnished potentially deep copper all these would be quite accurate descriptions I would say um, of the, the color of the whiskey so it's definitely a bit darker I wish I had a bottle of 12 year old um, to show you in comparison but it's definitely a little bit darker than um, than their usual um, I'm gonna check because I'm starting to doubt myself if it is a 12 because some of these distilleries like Oban um, and Dalwini um, release 14 year olds not 12 um so let's see talisca yeah 10 year old uh, is just bog standard um whiskey um from talisca that you can get from the shop and price wise it's sort of a little bit cheaper than this 36 37 pounds a bottle so it's much and such the same really this is a little bit more expensive but not much not much more so let's cracker open um, and uh, now what I do like about this um, and a lot of the Diageo distilleries have this standard shape bottle this is your bog standard single malt bottle shape it does have a wooden top which is great it's painted but it is wooden I can reassure you of that but it does have like Crag and Moor has a c composite cork so, yeah, you know, let them off with that. On the whole, I like I like the design. Um, I like the the color of the of the label. Um, yeah, I'll I'll read you a bit of what it's, of what it says. Uh, it actually, doesn't say much on the back, but at the front it just says an intense talisker with a profoundly maritime character, like a warm welcome from a wild Hebridean sea hmm yeah it's quite like it it's quite dramatic quite dramatic I like that it's good I got given this as a gift um, some guys I worked with six seven years ago and at the end of the job they all clubbed together and bought me this lovely bottle of whiskey so and I'm still enjoying it to this day you know six at least six years ago maybe six and a half years ago um, so yeah Good on them. Cheers. Mm. It's not as um, peaty smelling as I remembered, actually. Um, I was remembering it to be a bit stronger than this. So, you know, if you've got a whiskey, like I said in the last stream, if you've got a whiskey and you've tried it and you've you maybe got a, a sort of inaccurate memory of it, um, it's always good to go back to whiskies and give them another try and think, oh, actually, hmm, I thought I thought it was peatier than that or smokier than that or but it's quite briny you know it's quite it smells a bit like the sea sort of salt water but it's like quite creamy with it it's not like it doesn't punch in the nose it you've got that brininess but it's quite a creamy brininess mmm so sort of quite a lot of um, banana notes coming through a bit of sweetness you know and then you get that sort of smoky barbecue smell and a bit of sort of citrus fruit, maybe lemons. But on the whole, I would say hint of smoke, but quite a lot of sweetness, um, which is good. Um, you know, it's smells good to me. Mm. Right, let's have a little taste. Mm. 
it's a really thick whiskey. It sort of really fills your mouth and mm, sort of that creaminess sort of comes through. Um, but you do get that smokiness actually on the taste quite quickly. And there's that brininess that sort of, you know, it, this stuff's made and um, pretty sure it's matured right next to the sea. Uh, been to the distillery and it's it's a really lovely spot actually and um, it's right next to the sea. It's in a sort of bit of a, not a cove, but um, it's not the open sea, it's sort of a, an inlet or I um, can't think what the word is just now, but um, it's quite sheltered. Um, but it is close to sea, so you're getting quite a lot of that sort of maritime notes. A bit like you do with Oban and Old Pulteney. Um, you're getting that impression of um, salty sea air. Um, yeah, it's, it's tasty. It's really, really good. Um, but yeah, smoky, quite smoky um, and briny. And with a little bit of sort of chilly hotness in it, you know, a bit of... Bit of um, bit of heat um, but actually quite smooth um, really smooth there's a little bit of throat burn ever so slightly but it's quite smooth it does it's not awfully peppery on the tongue just a little bit of that sort of chilly heat you get but really quite understated so I wouldn't be put off, off by this whiskey if you if you don't like PT smoky whiskies. This is on the lower scale of PT smoky whiskies. So don't don't get put off by it. It's um it's a good one. And the the finish is it's quite a dry finish on this uh, whiskey. It's it's sort of that oak oaky dryness. Um it sort of makes you want to I should have really put that on. I thought that was on silent. Tell you what, put the old, uh, I'm slipping here. There we are. Right, there we go. I shouldn't make a noise again. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, quite drying. Um, and it's got that, it leaves you with a sort of smoky, Smoky flavour in your mouth, sort of a, like, I don't want to say charcoal, but like, again, I've said this before, but like a, a campfire, an old campfire, maybe you've, let's say you've been camping and you've sat around a campfire all night, you've gone to bed, you wake up the next morning and you've got that, you've got that smell of, of the smoke in your nose and that is also translated into into your palate um, and you've got that and you think, oh, I, need a, I need a drink of, of some something just to uh, cleanse my mouth and that that's that's what you what you get with this you get left with that sort of put out fire sort of um, taste and um, sensation sort of thing it's, it's nice it's lovely it's really good um, probably the smokiest whiskey to be produced on the Isle of Sky currently um, hello Kaevs how you doing um, yeah it's Obviously, it's the only at, at the time uh, the only whiskey being produced or or having been released on Sky. So um, this is their peatiest um, or the smokiest whiskey that they've they've produced. So I don't know of any other distilleries. You know, I know there's other distilleries producing, but they've not released any whiskey just yet. There's a chance that one of those might come along and really produce a smoky, maybe heavily peated whiskey. Which would obviously knock this out of the park. They couldn't then say, you know, the smokiest whiskey to be produced on the Isle of Skye. Um, so, yeah. But I think the way they get the peat into this whiskey is by um, using, you know, peated barley. So the barley has been sort of dried over a peat fire. Um, and it's, you know, when they buy it, when they, when they sort of get the, the barley from the, the, the sort of pr the suppliers, if you like, they can specify how peaty they want it. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's PPM is the is a description. I'm not too sure how what that translates to. It's, it'll be something like 
peat per meter or peat per millimeter or it'll be something like that um, so the higher the number the more peated it is um, so that's what how they'll have got the peat into this whiskey um, and then the smokiness they've got in from the sort of toasted barrels like I said at the start there um, so yeah no it's a uh, it's a good one and reasonably priced like I said 38 to 41 42 pounds a bottle can't go wrong it's a good quality whiskey it's you know it's, it's talisk at the end of the day it's not going to be um, it's not going to be rubbish. Whatever they produce is going to be good. That sounds bad, not good. <laughs> what What sounds bad, Malice? Put a couple of drops of water. PPM. Parts per million. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I thought I'd heard PPM before, actually. Parts per million. Okay, yeah, so higher the ppm parts per million of peat in the in the barley naturally the whiskey is going to be um, more peated um so I would, I would i would assume this is quite a low ppm in this barley that they've used to make this uh to make this whiskey so all right well thanks for that parts per million you're probably right you're probably right so i just put a bit of water with it just a couple of drops of water, like I do with all my whiskies, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, but I would suggest just a couple of drops of water. It changes the whiskey. At the end of the day, you get a slightly different drink in your glass. And if you don't put water in it, you're sort of missing out on on more different flavours, different a different experience. So, bit of water. It's not done much to the nose. It's probably just dulled everything down a little bit. Parts per million, and the measure used to determine the phenol content of malted barley after kilning and before being used in the rest of the whiskey. Well, thank you very much for that, Malice. I thought I'd switch that bloody phone off. Oh no, I never actually put it on silent. <laughs> silent now. Oh, I was rushing about a bit before doing the stream. Actually, I'd left it a smidgen too late for getting uh, getting things organised. Because um, all this stuff behind me, that's all got to get put out and set up and get the computer going and all that sort of stuff. I don't, it doesn't it's not left there all week. So um, it's usually the next morning after a stream. I just get it all back in the cupboard. So, but it's good to get the bottles moving and um, try and keep the corks moist. Give them a wee upside down, you know. Just do this every now and then. Keep the keep the corks moist because if you leave them in there dry too long, they start to shrink and you will lose your whiskey. So that is no good. So it's good to move them every now and then. Keep them moving. So yeah, um, yeah, it's dulled it down definitely on the nose. A little bit of water, but you're still sort of getting the same smells out of it you know the sort of brininess the creamy the banana the citrusy sort of notes that sort of barbecue smell as well but it's just all a little bit less so but actually the reverse of of, of the nose it's made it stronger on the palate um it's made it more smoky it's made it more sort of peppery on the tongue um so yeah it just shows you you know putting water in with whiskey can change the smell but not change the flavor it might not you know might change the flavor but not the smell and all the various combinations might make it smell stronger smell weaker Taste stronger, taste weaker. <laughs> so, but obviously, if you put, if you keep putting water in, it's gonna get to a stage where you're gonna dilute the whiskey so much that it is naturally gonna make it lighter and easier to drink. And that's what I say to everybody who's trying to get on and um, to start dr drinking whiskey. Just, just keep putting water in until you find it acceptable. Um, and then, if you realise, right, okay, that's how much water I need to put in, just start. You know, next time, put a little bit less whiskey, of water in. Put a little bit less and a bit less and a bit less and that's how you'll end up being able to drink whiskey straight which is a joy where's the whiskey sour sour i think 
I don't think I've ever drank sour whiskey. Um, I think you'd have to, I don't know, have it in some sort of cocktail to make whiskey sour. Um, no, never had sour whiskey. Only ever had, you know, smoky, peaty, sweet, quite drying whiskey. But sour, no, never had sour whiskey. Maybe you can enlighten me of a sour whiskey you've had, Malice. I use tap water, Malice. Yeah, um, there's a lot of um, people out there that say, "Oh well, you should be you should be using the water that the whiskey was made with," but unfortunately, Talisker don't bottle their water. Um, I'm not exactly going to go and uh, drive up to Sky, get myself a little bottle of their water. Um, tap water is fine. Um, the only thing I would say is if your water is particularly hard, if you live in a city uh, or in the UK, if you live down south, your water is going to be quite hard water. Um, so if you get a lot of lime scale in your kettle and around your, your taps and stuff like that, I would say use bottled water in that instance um, because, yeah, it hard water is not really going to do your whiskey any good because whiskey um, isn't made with hard water. It's generally made with soft water. Um, so you're putting a different type of water in with it and I don't think it would work very well. But yeah, more, you know, use bottled water if you want, but we're quite lucky here. We've got good soft water. Um Use your, use your tap water. It's just fine. Cocktail, you know. You add the sour mitt to make the whiskey sour. I have a reverse osmosis water filtration system. Jesus Christ. Well, there you go. So you, you're probably pretty safe with that water, Malice. You're probably pretty, pretty safe with that. Yeah, so um, that's a good question, though. Um, what water to use? A lot of people might argue, oh, look, it's just, it won't make a difference. But all these little things do make a difference. Like, for example, when I wash these glasses, obviously we use, uh, you know, washing liquid to, to, to clean the dishes and stuff. I will make sure that I rinse these glasses with hot, hot water um, to make sure there's no more you know, residue of the, of the, of the, the, um, fairy, not fairy liquid, but whatever you use. Um, and then I dry them and I tend to dry them with a really clean, like a fresh, um, dishcloth. But if the dishcloth maybe, you know, half a week old or something, um, I'll just use some, um, kitchen roll, some kitchen paper. Um, and then it's just really to ensure that you're not introducing any residues or any flavors or smells into your glass because you know you can imagine if if I dried this with like an old dishcloth and it had you know it started to smell that's going to affect the smell of the whiskey and it could potentially affect the flavor of the whiskey so why take the risk so um, that's my process with with cleaning the glasses is uh, make sure they're rinsed properly dried properly with something that's clean and hasn't got any detergent on it for example so you know um we don't use masses of things like softeners and stuff like that in our, in our washing we just use the the wash tabs but um, that's how sometimes i use the the kitchen top paper because it's paper and it's um all it's there to do really is to absorb the moisture and dry your dishes um, so it's not introducing any flavors or smells to that's left on the surface of your glass um, now yeah that's I, I, that's quite in depth and um, but I only do that because I respect the whiskies that I drink and you know they've been they've they've waited however many tens of years to, to, to end up in a in a bottle in my cupboard so I'm gonna just spend that little bit extra time making sure that they've got a nice clean glass to be uh, to be drunk from you know it's 
good. And it's, to be honest with you, it's not as peaty as I remembered. If anything, it's more on the smoky side, this whiskey. Definitely more, more on the smoky side. So um, don't be put off by it. Um, it's, it's a good whiskey. It's good quality. It's not too smoky. It's got a hint. It does have a hint of peat, but not too much. Um, so no, it's, uh, it's a thumbs up. Now I'm trying to think, when did I start marking the whiskies or giving them a score? I don't think this one, I think I'd done this one before I started doing the scoring system. I did have a, a system of like one to 10, but we discussed this on the stream a while back that one to 10 isn't specific enough. So um, it's a one to five scale that we've got these days. Um, and Talisker Storm scores a solid three, a solid three, you know. Uh, I'll not get into three and a half, so three and three quarters, but it's a three and it's a three any day of the week. Um, so it's a good middle of the road whiskey, reasonably priced. Um, you get plenty of um, flavor, uh, plenty of uh, good whiskey to enjoy. So yeah, three, three out of five. Flex, I've got nothing to flex, Malice. This is all, I don't, I don't do any, don't go to the gym. Just, I just go to the gym of life. That's, that's where I go. Flex. So has anybody got any whiskies they've been drinking over the last week or found a new whiskey or think they might be interested in another whiskey or anything on your radar that you might, might have a look into getting, buying? Or something that you're enjoy, looking forward to enjoying the pub when they reopen. Have you got a nice bar that you're looking forward to going to, and you you know they've got a good selection of whiskies, so you're getting excited to go and explore these whiskies. Trying to think. We've got a bar in town and they've got quite a good selection of whiskies actually. And um, the problem is it's a, it's a, it's a proper beer place. It's a brewery bar. And one of the main draws for going there is for the beer. So I'm not usually in the mood for whiskey when I'm there. It's a bit of a shame really, because they do have a good selection of whiskies. So I think next time I'm going to make a conscious effort to maybe not have four beers, maybe have two beers and two whiskies. I don't know, we'll see. I'll probably get overexcited and go for four or five beers with the pizza, the pizzas they make there and the sto stone, bake, stone baked pizzas are to die for, are to absolute die for. Um, so I cannot wait till that place opens up, but I know it's going to be chock-a-block this year with bloody tourists, but... Us, uh, us locals not get a chance. There you go. It's pretty quiet here tonight. Not much. Not many. Uh, who have we got in? Oh, Biggles, you're here. Good to see you. I hope you're enjoying your um, your new VIP status. Uh, Kai Evs, good to see you. Malice, obviously, some good chat. Uh, drop dog, Motopper twelve and Pekin Genesis Genesis. Ah, it's good. Good to see you guys here. Good to good to have you. No, not three out of ten, Malice. Three out of five. Three out of five. So, um, yeah, we stopped doing out of ten. You know, I was getting too many complaints about the the scores out of ten that it wasn't specific enough. It was too easy just to say seven out of ten. But the same with this. It's too easy to say three out of ten. Um I'm not sure if there's much of a difference in the in the out of ten or out out of five personally. What do you think, Melise? I think um I think out of ten was fine personally, but no, I got quite a few guys are saying on here, no, no, it should be out of five. So we started doing it out of five. So really, if it's three out of five What's that like? That is like a six and a half, seven out of out of ten, isn't it? So 
gives you an idea of where we're at. Gives you an idea. But yeah, three out of five on this one. Hmm. It's good. Did enjoy that. Ten or more room to show differences. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. That is why I start. I did it out of ten. Um, it's difficult, though, isn't it? I suppose all you can do is say, well, if it's a if it's a four out of five, essentially that is a an eight out of ten, isn't it? You know. Yeah, I think you're right, Malice. I, and actually, since I've been doing that system, a lot of whiskies have been three out of five. There has been the odd one that's been a four out of five. Not not one has made it up to five out of five yet. Uh, but if it's out of ten, you could go with a seven or a six. Yes, I know. Yeah. I That was my argument. I got shot down. It was a no. You know, I listen to the community. When the community speaks, I listen. That is one thing um, uh, that I always try, is I try and listen to you guys. Yeah, potentially shot down a little bit, but hey, what you guys... Uh, I listen to the community. What you guys want, I will try and provide. So the consensus that time was out of five would be best. So that's what we've gone for. So now this bottle, you, you're going to struggle to see this because it's such a short, dumpy little bottle. <laughs> You're the whiskey man. Damn it, what you says goes. Oh, I wish it was like that. Right, so what we've got here is a Buna Haben, right? Um, what is it? It's a hand filled exclusive. I actually bought this from the distillery itself. See on the side there, it's got. Um, who bottled it, what date they bottled it on, um, what age it is, is it a 12 year old, um, which warehouse it's come from, the cask number, it's also got this PX butt, which you might think what the hell does PX butt mean, so it means that this whiskey was matured in a, an ex sherry cask, PX is a type of sherry, um, Pedro Jimenez is, is what it stands for, um, and I'm a sucker for sherry cask or sherry finished whiskies and absolutely so when i saw this i knew i had to have it um i'm trying to remember how much it was it was 35 pounds for this little bottle which now how does it, it only holds 20 uh so two 200 ml um so it's what's that that's not quite it's just a, is it just over a quarter of a bottle because a bottle holds 700 ml doesn't it so it's just over a, a, a quarter bottle um yeah i know the only thing that's missing is the guy bottling it i think it's actually a woman in this oh no l mcdermid so I, I don't know i'm assuming it's i don't know who it could be a could be a man could be a woman who knows but you've got this little man r driving his boat which i think is quite quite good that's the buna haben uh sort of logo um yeah, so there's quite a few of these been been released over the years. Um, as I've I've got a handful of them upstairs that I've I've sort of bought as slight investment pieces. Um, you know, I bought that for thirty five pounds. I could probably sell it for forty forty five if I'd not opened it. But luckily, I bought two: one to drink, one to keep. So um, they're only thirty five pound each. So what's that? Seventy pounds. Uh, and we were at the distillery. Um, so I thought, what the hey, I better, I better invest. So um, yeah, but like I said, this is cask strength. And that's something I didn't show you. There's the strength of the whiskey. Sixty point four percent. So it is cask strength. This has not been diluted in any way, shape, or form. It has been pulled out of the cask and put into this bottle and sealed and sold. So. Um, that's how I left it to last because I knew it was going to be a bit of a punchy whiskey. So I thought I'd leave it till end. Um, but yeah, what else have we got to say about this whiskey? So yeah, it's strong as cast strength, 60.4%. Pedro Jimenez says, um, we'll get onto the colour in a minute once we pour it. Um, yeah, and uh, like I said, ooh, ooh, that's not been open for a while. It's got a wooden lid, a proper cork. So 
they've done they've done a good job oh buna haben and i've not got much that's left actually whoa right that's it she's finished she is finished i thought i had a little bit more than that left but obviously not so there you go um what was i going to say about Buna? yeah Buna haben so Buna Haben's on the island of Isla, which is in the sort of it's on the west coast of Scotland, and it's sort of on the if you split the west coast of Scotland into two halves, it's in the bottom half, it's on the southern half. Um, it is a, a, an island that's well known for its distilleries. It's got I'm not too sure how many. It's an empty sad day. Well, it's a small bottle, and I have had it for like well, how many years have I had it? About a year and a half, so it's it's only a small bottle. So I'm, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure how many distilleries they've got on Isla, but they they must have at least thirteen, fourteen. And I think the island's only got a population of about two and a half, three thousand people. Um, and it's yeah, well known for its peaty whiskies. But luckily, Buna Haben is one of these distilleries that um, shies away from the peat. Um, and just tries to be a little bit different. It's an Isla whiskey, but it hasn't got the Isla punch. Um, the likes of Lafroig has is really punchy. Um, you know, Burichladich is another one that's really, really peaty. And um, the sorts of whiskies that I'll probably be drinking when I'm 65, 70, um, because I don't think I'm going to get into those whiskies just yet i think i'm uh, i'm just going to keep enjoying what i enjoy at the moment and dabble uh, dabble in the sort of the, the slightly peatier whiskey so we'll see so yeah I'll show you the color of this whiskey uh, it's slightly different to the um you're not old enough to drink those whiskies <laughs> unfortunately i am molly's unfortunately i am by quite a bit um look at the color of that whiskey that's that's a bit darker, isn't it? So, uh, mahogany to burnt umber is the is the sort of class of this colour of the whiskey. It's quite a bit darker, but like I said, it's come straight from the cask. It's not been diluted in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's a lovely colour, actually, really nice. It's almost red. I'm looking at it here, obviously not through the camera, um, but it's almost got a red hue to it. It's beautiful, really nice. So. Obviously, if you buy a Pedro Jimenez Sherry, it'll be damn sight darker than that. I've actually got a Pedro Jimenez over there. Um, and yeah, it's it's really dark, really dark. It's, it almost looks like, well, it does actually look like red wine. Um, so this um, this is where it gets a lot of its colour from. It's from the, the, the Pedro Jimenez casks. So yeah, let's have a, let's have a little smell here. It's so different, like straight away. You, you know, if 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 somebody was blindfolded and you gave them a talisker to smell, they'd say, "Oh yeah, that's whiskey. Yeah, okay, it's probably from Isla. It's got quite a bit of peat, a bit of smoke." You smell this, and it doesn't even smell like whiskey. Because that's the strength. The strength of this whiskey is just um, so much more. You're just getting a lot more, um, a lot more nose from it. You know. It's quite nutty on the nose. And like you get this sort of like cured meat sort of um, taste. You didn't, do, no, I don't, I, I've not diluted it yet, Malise. Um, this is straight cask strength whiskey. Um, once I've had a couple of little sips, I will put a bit of water in. I normally put like two drops of water in, but with this, I'll probably put three or four. And um, that's the one good thing about cask strength whiskey is you can dilute it a lot more and essentially you get more whiskey for your money at the end of the day you know try not to drink cask strength whiskey straight all the time because that's that's an expensive way to to uh, to drink whiskey yeah cured meats and sort of like like a really sulfurous sort of smell it, it i'm probably not selling this whiskey but i don't even know if you can still buy it you can probably buy it on um various sort of auction websites and stuff you might you might see a bottle of this come up but i don't think you can buy it in the shop anymore yeah, sulfurous. It's really punchy on the nose. It's it's not awfully appetizing on the nose, I must admit. 
There's even like hints of like you know, like burnt rubber. If somebody does like wheel spins in a car park, you get that that burnt rubber sort of smell. Right, let's have a little taste. Like I said, a couple of little sips and then a bit of water. It's got a kick. It's got a kick. <laughs> it's a little bit sweet. Um, very spicy. Very spicy. It's like... It's like you've just had a curry or something on your tongue. It's really spicy. A lot of sort of dried fruit notes. Um, quite drying in general, actually, in the mouth. Um, but yeah, that nuttiness comes through. Um, it's quite oily. So it sort of coats the mouth quite quick, if you like, and that, and it sort of stays there. The finish is quite long um, on this whiskey. Um, long and spicy. And yeah, sort of sweet to sort of dry finish. Um, it sort of makes you thirsty, this whiskey, but that's because it's so strong. So what that does as soon, it's like, well, we've all, we all know what it's like to use hand sanitizer these days and that stuff's at 70% alcohol. You rub that on your hands and what does it do to your hands? It dries your hands out. So this is what this is doing to the inside of your mouth. This is 60%. So this is only 10% less strong than hand sanitizer that I'm drinking here. Um, and that's what it does to your mouth. It The alcohol evaporates and it takes the moisture with it. So that's where you get the drying, uh, drying sort of feel in the mouth. It is a fascinating whiskey though. Very fascinating, but the sweetness of the of the sherry cask is there, but it's very much overpowered by the dryness, the dried fruits. It's I. This is not a beginner's whiskey. I'll tell you that for nothing, right? Like I said, I normally put two drops of water in my whiskey. Ah, this one's getting a full one, two. Three, four, maybe even five. Five. That's a good thing about this sort of whiskey is you can't really put too much water in. As long as you're being careful, like um, I wouldn't be pouring a jug like that and say, oh, it's fine. Dramshare said we could, um, we don't need to worry about over putting out too much water. You know, if you're using a pipette like that or you're very careful with your jug, you struggle to put too much water in with this because it's got the strength it can put up with it, you know? Um, so, so I've just put those five drops of water. So that's brought it down probably from 60 point, what is it, 60.4%. Probably brought it down to about 55, 54% potentially. Um, not too sure. You could, you could probably work that out, couldn't you? If you if you knew the, the volume of liquid um, and then, and you knew obviously it was 60.4% at that, if you added, oh, now this I'm starting to challenge myself now. But you, you know what I mean. If you if you add ten percent water to it, essentially you should be bringing the the alcohol content down by ten percent. I think I'm right in saying that. But please feel free to let me know if I'm talking rubbish. So it smells a little bit more pleasant on the nose now. It's a bit more sort of floral. But it, it is still quite nutty. And that sulfurous note still there. Really quite sulfurous. It reminds you of um, science class when they when you used to burn sulfur. Did you ever do that? I don't know why we did that. I've got a clue. But you, it just smells like burnt sulfur. So let's see if that's helped the, the strength of it a bit. Still strong, but it's it's much the same actually. Like I could probably put a, a ten drops of water in this, and before it starts changing, to be honest, I probably could. If anything, well, let's do that. Let's put another couple of drops of water in. 
because obviously now there's slightly less whiskey in the glass. You've got to remember that. So we put another two drops. Let's see if that changes it at all. So you can see where the value for money comes with with um, with cask strength whiskey. You know, I've just taken a sip and I probably put that sip back in with water, and it's still going to be a really good whiskey. So it's almost like free whiskey. It's great, you know. Um, but it's stronger stuff, so you just got to watch yourself with it. Don't don't jump straight into the the um, the, the, the cask strength whiskies because you could uh, blow your head off a wee bit, you know. Mm. Big difference. That's it. There you go. We've hit we've hit the nail on the head. That is it now at a really good drinkable level. Um, it's taken the, the sort of harshness off of it. It's much smoother. Um, easier to drink. Less sort of peppery. Lovely. So there you go. So what I've learned from this, now it's a shame it's at the end of the bottle and I'll not have any more. I do have one upstairs that if I feel so obliged, I might crack open someday, but a note for the future, put more water than you think you need to put in with this whiskey. And I think that would be the same for any um, cask strength whiskey. Don't be afraid to put a decent lump of water in, um, you know, don't drown it. You know yourself if you put too much water in a whiskey, it's disgusting. Um, just tastes like water, uh, whiskey flavored water. Um, but yeah, you can be quite bolshy with the water with this stuff. And and to be honest with you, that I've I've hit the nail on the head there. That's a lot more pleasant. A lot, a lot easier to drink, more enjoyable. You're getting the more of the sort of the delicate flavors coming through, you know, sort of slight citrus flavors. The sort of dried fruits are, are less dried, if that makes sense. So you're looking at more like, you know, the lighter sort of dried fruits, like maybe sultanas and raisins. Uh, whereas before it was more like, you know, um, I don't know, dried apricots, potentially maybe sort of prunes. That sort of real quite strong flavors you know so that's made it a lot nicer really enjoying it now actually wish i'd put more water with this whiskey in the past i think in the past i was um i was just thinking oh well you know this is this is it cask strength whiskey you can't really change it too much but you can keep putting the water in until like, you get it to a nice level because and, and that's, the th that's the beauty of using like the little pipette idea or, or the wee straw that i use is you know, you you struggle to put too much in. So just a couple of drip drips of water, have a taste, a mm, couple more. Whereas if you use a jug and you just pour it in, it's it's all over before you know it and you've put too much. And once you put it in, unfortunately you can't take it out. The only thing you could try and do is put more whiskey on top of it to try and balance it out. Hello, M Topper 12, how are you getting on? Good to see you. So yeah, now that is one thing you could do. You could put whiskey on top of it, but I wouldn't advise that either. Um, I would just drink, drink the whiskey. Not much, MT M topper. Sorry, <laughs> not much. No, just enjoying a, a whiskey at the end of the working week here, uh, starting the weekend for everyone. Hope you're all doing well and had a good week. Um. Yeah, no, so not much really, not much banter. What are you guys up for the weekend? Have you got any any plans? Are you going on a wee day trip somewhere or going to visit some family in a garden or something? Lots of plans. Yeah, I think I might even take another drop of water. Now there's very little in my glass now, so I've just be got to be careful. I'll just put one more drop and see if that helps it even more. I would imagine it probably will. Trisha. I'm well, thank you, Trisha. How are you? Elf Huntress. What did you just do? Are you wine tasting? That's so fun. No, whiskey. 
whiskey. This is a a whiskey tasting. No, I'm putting some water in my whiskey using a, a, a straw. Where have all these people come from? I've, all you guys are quite new. I've never seen you here before. So welcome. Welcome to Dramshare, where we enjoy whiskey and uh, try and learn a bit about whiskey. Yeah. Is that whiskey in that jar? Ja this, yes. <laughs> This is Brunnerhaben. It's a, a hand-filled warehouse exclusive, quite a small bottle. Uh, I do have Kraken over there, but ugh, it's rum, you know, it's so. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I do like Kraken. Kraken's a good rum, good dark rum. But yeah, Brunnerhaben, uh, it's a, a cask strength. It's really strong, this 60.4%. Uh, you can see there, 60.4%. Um, quite strong stuff, uh, but it's good. Plenty of water. Um, and it's quite tasty, so it's good. Yeah, it's good to see you guys. Uh, I'm from Wales originally, um, living in Scotland just now. have been for the last 10... <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. You almost got it. I'm, I'm Welsh born and bred. I had the same question last week, actually. They said, where are you from? Where, where's that accent from? And um, But I've lived in Scotland, like I said, for about 11 years now. So, Yeah, that's what they said. It kind of shows, yeah. Once I say I'm from Wales, people say, oh, yeah, actually, I can hear it now. <laughs> hey, you guys it, that have just arrived, if you've not liked um, my uh, channel, go ahead and like it. Um, you'll get a wee notification when I'm on next. Um, we're going to be exploring lots of different whiskies. A lot of these ones behind me. I cannot hear it a single bit, my friend. All oh, right, okay, <laughs> fair enough. No, to be honest, I come from a part of Wales that doesn't have um, a strong accent at all. Um, so you know, and give it another, give it another five years i probably will have lived in scotland as long as i've lived in wales so uh no probably not five years probably seven or eight years but um yeah but uh no feel free to like the page uh, sorry it's not like because it's follow on here it's follow thing of facebook yeah follow me check out my facebook page though dram share um try and put a few posts on there <laughs> thank you very much trisha thanks very much for the new follow that's great great to build the community and uh, thank you very much. That's uh, much appreciated. You have an Essex accent. Mmm. Essex. <laughs> thank you very much, Elf Huntress. Thank you very much for the follow. It's good. It's good. It's good. Like I said, trying to build a community here. Um, get people into whiskey, maybe that are a bit afraid of getting into whiskey, don't really know what they're looking for. Um, and... The idea is that I give you guys a an idea of what <coughs> whiskies taste like. Thank you, Equex. Thank you very much for the follow. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, give you guys an idea of what these whiskies are like. So, because whiskies are like um, quite expensive things. Like, is it, you know, a bottle of whiskey is going to set you back 30, 40 pounds at least. Now, a bottle of wine is going to set you back, what, eight pounds, nine pounds? And if you don't like it, you think oh, it's only eight, nine pounds. But if you buy a bottle of whiskey, and this has happened to me, you buy a bottle of whiskey and you open it up, you get all excited, you pour yourself a wee dram and you realise, oh, I don't like it. And you've spent 50, 60 pounds on a bottle. You're pretty pissed off at that point. Um. Well, look, Tricia, you just have to just... Keep trying. Don't you don't have to shoot the whiskey. Just just sip it. Sip it nicely. That's all you gotta do. Hello, just think, Aiden. How you getting on? Do you really like? <laughs> I don't know. I always push my hair off to the side like that, and uh, yeah, it's a bit different. Yes, with water. I've had about five drinks and I'm mad with it. Ah, oh, it's good. That's good. 
Hello Alan Boss, 1969. Thanks for the comment, much appreciated. I don't tend to get uh, positive comments about my hair. It's a little bit plain and old fashioned, I suppose, but hey, I don't have to mess about with all that gel and crap in the morning, so. I don't know where you guys have all come from, but you all seem to be quite merry and maybe had a few a few drinks, potentially. <laughs> For now. But, like, I've always had quite a high hairline. I remember when I was in secondary school and people says, oh, you're going bald, you're going bald. And I was like, no, I'm not. My hair's been like this since day dot. Like, that is how my hair is. All right, that's fine, Malise. Look. Plenty of time for that. And obviously, I've not said it yet this stream, but everybody please drink responsibly and make sure you you stick within the law, obviously, of, of the country that you're watching from. <laughs> Whoa, thank you very much for the bit. Uh, M Topper, thank you very much. That's uh, very kind of you. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. One drink, a whole bottle, or I'll leave. <laughs> drink a whole bottle or I'll leave. All right, well, see, this was full. This is full earlier on. Look at it now. Empty. So there you go. I've drank a whole bottle for you. <laughs> I'm not going to just down a bottle of whiskey. Let's see. Uh, bips, bro. Bips. I don't even know what bips are. So. Uh, I'm not drinking as well. can tell that, that guy's not drinking as well. So no, 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 you're all right. You're all right. Nah, nah. Alright, so it's good. it's good to see you guys on here. Great to have some uh, new people on the stream. Like, there's been times where I've been on here and it's like just me talking to myself. But I've had a few, a few, um, a few, uh, a few viewers tonight, so it's good. But no, this is great. Thoughts on fondue cheese? Never had it. What's your thoughts about Bitcoin? Don't touch it. I don't tend to buy something I can't touch or hold. I, I quite like uh, physical assets that I can actually hold. Uh, Bitcoin to me just stinks of dodginess. Uh, well, Alan, that's probably not uh, not the right thing to be doing. So I would uh, I would tell you not to do that. Uh, Conor McGregor, um, he he's he's good at what he does. He's good at his um, his mixed martial arts or his uh, what is it UFC or whatever he does. Is it UFC? Um, do you know he's got a whiskey of his own? Just think, Aiden. Do you know that? Uh, the muffin burglar. None. Neither of them. I don't support any football. But I do support American football. Um, but yeah, no, he's he's got his own whiskey. Uh, it's a blended Irish whiskey called... Um, oh, I've had a mind blank. What is his whiskey called? Um, Twelfth Round or something like that? Oh, hang on, I'm going to have to check. Do I like gin? Yes, I like gin. I don't no no not not American football. <laughs> American football. God, I've gone all blurry. Why is that? American football is in um proper twelve. Well done. Thanks for that. Just thinking. No, not American soccer. American football. Um so like I support the Kansas City Chiefs, yeah? And uh, you've got things like the Dallas Cowboys, you've probably heard of them. Um, the they were called the Oakland Raiders, but they're now called the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, yeah, I've tried the pr proper twelve. Just just think, Aiden, and um, it's a little bit on the light side for me to be honest. Yeah, it's uh, it's not not really got enough oomph about it for me. So I had a little sample of it um, sent to me for Christmas, or was it maybe even my birthday last year? I can't remember, but. Yeah, it was it was on the light side. Not just needs to be a bit stronger. Um, it's from the town he's from. I didn't know that. Uh, do you do I like aviation gin? I've never tried that. 
Um, just think, Hayden, do you know what? You took the words right out of my mouth. It's too smooth and empty. You're absolutely right. Um, that was one of the descriptions I used, actually, when I drank it first. You're just waiting for the flavour. You're, you're waiting for something to, to arrive that never arrives. And empty is the exact word that I used at the time. It's it's like, wh where's, where's the rest of it? You know? Um... It's like Grey Goose, but no one wants to taste vodka. Unless it's in like a cocktail. I quite like vodka and cocktails. And um, vodka Red Bulls, yeah, drink them on a night out, stuff like that. But no. Yeah, Malice. Yeah, thanks for having my back there. I, I'm a whiskey, not a gin man. But I do like gin and I like rum. I do like rum. Somebody was on here earlier on about the Kraken. Um, Obviously, the Kraken is a dark rum. Um, I'm more into my spiced rums than my dark rums. Um, <laughs> thanks, Trisha. Thanks for that. Um, yeah. Um, no, spiced rums rather than dark rums for me. But there you go. Yeah. Um, no, Kraken is a dark rum. I'm pretty sure it is. I've got a bottle over there. This where the cool absolutely this is this is where all the cool kids are at. I'm gonna find out um if the Kraken now how the hell do you spell it? Kra Kraken Rum, here you go. Okay, sorry, I I stand corrected, uh Malice. It says here the Kraken black spiced rum. So yeah. Black spice drum, so it's a spice drum, but a, a black variety, I suppose. So you know, you're right. Sorry, I uh, apologise, Malice. You were right. It is a spice drum, but it's obviously compared to something like Captain Morgan's or uh, something like that. It's it's quite a bit darker. Um, so yeah, <laughs> take take that whiskey. You did. The... Do you get my idea? Oh, I don't know. Uh, hang on. Wait a minute. How was that? Anyway. You guys seem to be chatting amongst yourselves. It's great. I quite like it when you guys chat amongst yourselves. It's quite good. Biggles, hello. No. Uh, ah, you're probably talking amongst yourselves. Uh, I was playing Jack in the Box. It sounds interesting. Yeah. Mm. So that's it. This is this is the very last drops. This is the last last little morsel of this whiskey. Not got any more of this one. Mm. Hello Jam on the Grog I uh, dram. Um Grog I ah, it's Grog slang for drink because there's a there's a pub in town called the Grog and Gruel. Crack another bottle already. <laughs> well, funny enough, I do have, um, just in case it was going well and um, some people came along, I do always have a spare glass beside me. Now, just a note for you, it's always a new glass. Different whiskey, different glass. Never put your whiskey in the same glass. So I've got all these whiskeys behind me. Um, you guys, um, have got any... Um, that's what they called it in Escape to Monkey Islands. Oh, Krog. You'll have a drink of me. Right. What are we going for? I think I'll go for this Anok 12 year old. I've got quite a bit of this. Yeah, we'll have another one. Sod it. Oh, Jesus, what happened there? Half that flipping cork's gone. Look at that. Half that's gone. Not in the bottle, so that's all right. Yeah, this is Anok, 12 year old. Quite a lighter whiskey. I'm probably doing this the wrong way around, to be honest, yeah. Um, it is a Highland single malt whiskey, 12 year old, as you can see there. Uh, it says here, the Knock Do distillery is situated beneath a black Knock Hill, known to the locals in, the, in its Gaelic name of Anok. There you go. 
So it's like a tip, typical. Oh, thanks for the new follow, uh, Jam the Hero. Thank you very much. Been lots of new followers tonight. It's been a, I think it's been a record night for, uh, for uh, new followers. Uh, Trisha, it's a single malt, not blended. You can usually tell that by the age. If it's got an age on the bottle, um, it tends to be a single malt. But although there are some blends that have got an age statement, but it's a single malt whiskey, um, and it's from Aberdeenshire. So if you're looking at a map of Scotland, if you know where, uh, like Inverness is, sort of go to the east and down a bit. That's Aberdeenshire there. Uh, the Japanese are into whiskey. Do you like any Japanese whiskey? Yeah, I like a few of them actually. Um, I've I've only tried maybe two or three Japanese whiskies in my in all my my whiskey days, but it's really good stuff. Really good quality whiskey. They know what they're doing. Um, they've got it down to a T, um, and they're probably just pissed off that they're not actually based in Scotland because they can't call it Scotch whiskey. Um, so yeah, but no, Japanese whiskey is great, and but I do find it slightly overpriced. Uh, that's the only thing with Japanese whiskey; it's not it's not really reasonably priced, you know, to get a good one. So single malt Scotch is what you want with whiskey. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, I, I'm not for or against. Um, well, I'm not against blended whiskies. There's some really good blends out there, but like, yeah, I tend to be more of a single malt sort of guy. Um, yeah, I tried sake this one time. It was rank because I've never tried sake. Um, I've always wanted to try it, but sake is about fourteen percent in alcohol, so it's not as strong as whiskey, but it's like stronger than beer. Strong, you know, like it's sort of in that middle ground. So I can imagine how it maybe tastes a bit wishy washy. Uh, uh, yeah, and it's rice wine. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, Malice likes sake. Jam, <laughs> Jam the hero. Jam the hero says Glenn fiddling all the way. Glenn fiddling. <laughs> You've definitely had a few whiskies. Uh, Jam the hero. Mm. Now I'm not going to like run through any information about this whiskey mainly because I haven't got my notes in front of me for this whiskey. So I'm just going to enjoy it with you guys and have the crack. But I will say it's quite floral on the nose. Very floral, and um, you can see the colour, very light. It smells quite sweet on the nose. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's a completely different whiskey to what I've just been drinking. It's like, you can actually taste, like, floral notes and sweetness, like boiled sweets. It's just really good. Really good. Cla really classic whiskey. The best whiskey Anok ever made was the 16-year-old. The original 16-year-old whiskey was to die for. They don't make it anymore, but they do make a 16-year-old cask strength whiskey, which I've not tried, but I don't think it'll be the same as the original 16-year-old, which was just amazing. Um, yeah, so that's it. So, no, it's a good one. It's a good whiskey. And I'm trying to think who owns this distillery. I think it might be owned by... I don't think it's a Diageo distillery. I think it might be the, is it Inver House Distilleries or something like that? Yes, Jam the Hero, I'm a big, big brandy fan actually. When you start thinking about it, I, I like most spirits, um, but brandy, yes. Um, they do own bloody everything. Um, but yeah, brandy's great. My last bottle of brandy I had was a bottle of Cavossier, which was really nice enjoyed it i've had um what's it called a uh, martel brandy uh, which is good um but my favorite is remy martin uh, remy martin uh, brandy is amazing discord no do you know what i started i started this discord thing i've got the app on my phone and all that, but i didn't really get it like i'm not awfully technically minded you might notice that from probably the stream I've just about managed to plug the camera into the bloody computer, get myself a decent um, thingy. Oh, Kaev says she's sure that Anok is at Inver House Distilleries, so yes, remembered that one right. Um, 
But yeah, no, I'm not awfully technically minded. Discord, I don't tend to really understand it. I, and I, I've got to be honest with you guys, I've got like a day job and I, I, yeah, I haven't got time to be chatting away on Discord through the day. My job takes me out into the countryside where there's sometimes pretty shit 4G, no 4G, maybe no 3G. So no, never done the Discord. I just quite like to like have the chat on on the chat. So yeah. So uh, that's it. Hope you guys are enjoying the stream. If you are really enjoying it, feel free to um, you know have a look into subscribing. Maybe if you've got a, a what's it called a Amazon Prime account. Do you know? Kavosia is brandy, Jack. I'm. <laughs> you're not gonna be. Uh, Bra <laughs> I think they're pretty much the same thing, are they not? Or are you splitting hairs here? You're splitting hairs. Yeah, if you've got Twitch, uh, Amazon Prime. I don't know if you guys know it, but if you link your Twitch and your Prime accounts together, every month you get a free sub on Twitch through your Amazon Prime. So if you guys have enjoyed yourself and you fancy dropping me a wee sub, feel free to do it. You just have to link your two accounts because um, apparently Amazon it owns Twitch or possibly Twitch owns Amazon. Probably the other way around actually. I don't think Twitch owns Amazon. Amazon owns Twitch. Um, yeah, and it uh, doesn't cost you a penny. If you're, pay if, you're, if you're paying for Amazon Prime each month, you can drop me a wee sub. I, I I, I, I drop subs to people um, eat once a month because it doesn't cost me a penny and if you don't use it, you lose it, you know what I mean? Yeah, they're pretty much the same. Connick is just brandy that's from the Connick region. Ah, so it's like champagne and sparkling wine. Connick must be made in the Cognac region of France while brandy can be made anywhere in the world. Aha! Look at this. You guys have got some knowledge. You guys have got some cracking knowledge about spirits. Um... It's good. It's really good. I learn a lot from doing this stream. Um, I just hope you guys maybe glean something from me. So that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I wasn't streaming, I'd have Google as well. So that's where I do most of my research for for my streams is um, is Google, Wikipedia. You go on the distillery's website, they have some descriptions about it and stuff like that, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly like champagne and sparkling wine, good analogy. Thank you very much, Jam the Hero. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's good. So, has anybody got any big plans tomorrow? Any, because the weather's meant to be good in the UK, I don't know where you guys are, are watching from, but, um, might be a good day for a barbecue tomorrow. Maybe. Um, has anybody got any plans or going to go to the shop and buy themselves a bottle of whiskey or a bottle of brandy or a bottle of something that they're excited about? But yeah, this Anok is like a completely different whiskey. It's, you can tell it's if you were blindfolded, you would guess it was probably a Speyside rather than the Highland whiskey. Um, but yeah, it's it's good stuff. It's a good bog standard. Not bog standard, but it's a good good classic whiskey. Bottle of vodka, not too exciting. Well, the, the, you can get exciting vodkas out there. You know, you've got the, you know, you've got your standard Smirnoff, I suppose. And you've got Russian standard. You've got the one that's got the wee gold flecks in it, you know. Some good vodkas out there. It's Grey Goose. Somebody mentioned Grey Goose earlier on. That's a vodka, isn't it? Um, what's that other one? I like. I quite like that Russian standard. <laughs> you can't buy the expensive stuff. You drink it too fast, Molly's. Oh, well. Everything in moderation, remember, guys? Moderation. Moderation. You know, like they said with the, old, with the gambling, when the fun stops, stop. I quite like that one. I think it's quite clever. And the fun stops, stop. Quite good. But yeah, no, you know, yeah, I suppose with the likes of, it's like if you buy a bottle of, of wine that for like £25, 
you think that bolt's gonna just last me one night that's a lot of money you know but then think about it if you're on a night out how much do you spend now nobody's on nights out just now um so yeah you can just, you know spend a bit uh gin edinburgh gin and rock rose gin yeah absolutely agree kiev's um edinburgh gin is really good um rock rose gin from up in thurzo on the very north coast of scotland is also amazing and it comes in a really nice porcelain bottle um, they do a few different types like they do a spring edition they do their usual one they do a navy strength which is like quite strong gin um what other good gins are there? i'm trying to think what other gins we've had over the years but yeah edinburgh gin's a good one um yeah it's all good stuff it's all good stuff but yeah no going back to the brandy remy martin that's the stuff that is the stuff um it's like champagne cognac they call it so it comes in like a champagne um shaped bottle um it's just amazing it's so nice it's like sweet and smooth and um it's amazing if you really get it warmed up as well you get a lot more smell and flavor out of it i think but yeah brandy's good brandy's good um but it's funny, like there's certain nights where you think, oh, fancy a brandy or oh, fancy a whiskey. You just got to go with the flow and, and hope that you've got something in the house that's going to um, gonna do the trick, you know. Um, yeah, so it's it's uh, good to have a selection of drinks in the house. Um, you know, I've got a few rums, a lot of whiskies, and um, a f we've got a few gins in the house, a few brandies. Well, one brandy usually in the house. Um so no, you've got to have a good supply um, just to make sure, just in case, you know, World War Three kicks off and you've got to live off uh, your booze for a while. Hmm. One thing I was going to say when I started drinking this whiskey, another little trick is um, if you want to get the most out of your whiskey, if it's a 12 year old whiskey try and hold the whiskey in your mouth for like 12 seconds um if it's a 14 year old whiskey 14 seconds 10 year old whiskey 10 seconds it's just a rough rule of thumb it's what happens when you hold the whiskey in your mouth it starts to interact with your saliva and it starts to actually change flavor in your mouth um and i somebody told me that years ago and i thought that sounds like rubbish and i did it and i actually realized yeah that does work um so yeah, just use that as a rough guide. You know, the older the whiskey, try and hold it in your mouth a little bit longer. It's probably not something to do if you're starting out drinking whiskey because um, it's uh, it can, you can sometimes be a little bit harsh. You know, it's it's obviously quite strong alcohol. Um, so I right, just um, give that a try next time. You know, just hold it in the mouth for for. Uh, I'll I'll try it with this. See see what happens. That's amazing. It's it goes. It's the same for about six or seven seconds, and then all of a sudden, it sort of changes and it gets more mellow. And it's uh, that's a pleasure to drink. Just give it a bit of time. It's like anything, really. Give it a bit of time. Appreciate it. Give yourself some time to enjoy it. You know, um, it's nothing worse than doing stuff in a in a in a hurry. Um, just enjoy your whiskey. Um, enjoy it responsibly as we always say enjoy it responsibly um, but yeah just go for it I would say go for it that's the best way to be so I think what how long have I been I've been on for about an hour and a half now so um, it's probably time for me to bid you farewell um, it's been good chat tonight it's been good to see you guys uh, thanks for all the new follows and um Got the one bit from uh, M Topper Twelve. Thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. Um, really enjoyed the stream. Really enjoyed the chat. Some really good questions. Uh, Malice, you've been great. Um, Kaevs, thanks very much. Um, yeah, so it's been it's been a good stream. Uh, so hopefully we'll be back next week with something a bit different. 
Um, don't know what we're going to do yet, but we'll we'll work it out between now and then. Um, and yeah, hopefully see you guys again about the same time, 11 o'clock on Friday. It might go into Saturday next week. It might be Friday. Just keep an eye on the Facebook page. Keep an eye on my schedule on Twitch. And um, we'll see how we go. So yeah, have a great weekend, everyone. Um, drink responsibly. Enjoy what you're drinking. Take some time to enjoy it. And um, yeah, have a good week. Stay safe. And we'll catch you next week. Thanks so much. Take care. Cheers.